Hey everybody, welcome back. So in today's episode, we're gonna talk about what happens if you take a repel device and you accidentally drop it. Or I can think of a couple other sticky situations you might get yourself into in your climbing career. So let's do it. Alternate ways to repel. Let's climb on, I'll give you the beta. Okay, our first one is gonna be a munter. Everybody should know a munter, okay? We're gonna start off real easy. Just give it an upwards twist and then just pass the rope around the back. And we have a munter, okay? Super simple, super easy. Everybody should know this. After you make the munter, you grab those two strands that are in front of you. You do that twist up and then pass it around. You're gonna clip both those strands that you got there. You're not gonna clip, you're not gonna clip here, you're not gonna clip a single strand. You're gonna clip both these strands here. You got two strands now. So that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna clip that. Now you got a munter. Now the nice thing about the munter is you could go up. So it actually works really well as a uh, belaying uh, hitch. I would call it a hitch, not a knot. So that would work really well. The problem is what a munter will do is it'll twist up your rope because it's, go it's going around here and creating a twist. So if you ended up repelling and you got down to the ground, your rope is going to be a twisted mess. So a really neat solution is just making a super munter, which would just be bringing this, which is number two on our list. We just bring this around and you're gonna come in front of this upward strand, this top strand. You're coming in front of that. You're not coming back behind it or else it wouldn't work, see? So you're gonna come around the front and then once you come around the front of it, and you're going over the top, then you're clipping in here. Now, it's bonus points if you planned ahead and you made the, uh, the munter, the regular munter, the other way with the brake strand. Usually, if you're making a munter, you're going to go on a munter, then having the brake strand over here where it's touching the spine is, is good. But if you plan on making a super munter and you want to be up to code, then if you made the munter like this, where the uh, brake strand is touching the gate, and then you go to make your super munter, and then you come over here and clip it in. Now your brake uh, line is touching this gate, which is more kosher because uh, you know, you're not sliding on your gate or whatever. It gives you good feelings inside. Problem with the super munter is you don't really get this upward motion very easy and it just kind of twists everything up and it doesn't it's not see it's just not it's just not a good time it just it capsizes and becomes all crazy but the suit what the super munter is doing is it's twisting the rope it's counter twisting it so you're getting a twist in the one, one way and then it's twisting the other way which cancels out and you don't get a big mess now the problem is if you don't have a big girthy beautiful locker like this one well then you're gonna have a hard time getting two strands if you're repelling off one line it's one story but if you're repelling off two lines because you plan on pulling the rope through and you're doing a super munter well you might have a hard time fitting it through like if all you have if you dropped your belay device with your only locker or something you're gonna have a hard time fitting double stranded into here so talk about some other solutions whoa before we uh, before we get into two strands let's just talk about what would happen if you need to repel on your haul line that had like 250 pounds of water on it or there's a guy on this line and you need to get down to him or something and the rope is tensioned how would you repel down on this if you can't pick it up and, and put like a grigri on it it's not going to go down um, if you have a munter, you can't get a munter on it. So what I would do is preferably you have three locking carabiners. But what you do is, uh, let, me put, let me step on this rope, get tensioned, put a loop in it. Okay, so what you do is you clip the first beaner like this. And then you want to pass the rope around this side like that. So you're going to grab your other beaner. And what you want to do is you want to get the rope around here on the back side of it like that. 
And then what you're going to do is you're going to clip another beaner here, like this. Like that. So you got that over here, and it's coming over, and it's going into this one. Now you're going to do the same exact thing with this one. We're going to clip this one, and we're going to force this rope around the spine of the other one, like this. Let me take this off first. All right. All right, we're going to force the rope around the spine and then clip it in like so. Okay, so now we're going in, around, going in, around, and going in. Now, we can clip into that, clip that into our harness, and we can come down on that like so. As you can see, there's a lot of friction on it. You might be able to even get away with doing it twice, but the less beaners you put on, the less friction, so who? You want to keep your hand on the brake. It suddenly became slacked, right? There's still a lot of friction on here. But you're not going to go down like crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, there's that technique there. Alrighty. And that looks like it's twisting the rope up like crazy, too. You see how much the rope is, the rope is twisting around so much that this is adding a lot of twisting into the rope. So the rope's not, give this one a practice and let me know what you think because you're getting a lot of twisting going on here. Alrighty. Emergencies only, definitely. Not the, not the preferred way I'd want to do it. Okay, so here's a really cool method. What you're going to take first is two opposing lockers, up, oh, two opposing carabiners. And when you oppose carabiners, basically they kind of turn into a locker. So if you clip in here, right, the rope, it can't go through this spine, so it acts kind of like a locker. So if you take the, if you take two opposing and you pass a bite through like this, you can then take two more carabiners, and you want this rope to ride on the spine of this carabiner. So we're going to clip into here and then we're going to clip that into here like so so that we're going to basically create a repelling rack a wrapping rack and we could you add two in here okay so we have the spine here and what's really cool is you could stack these so if you got like a, bu a bunch of like small carabiners or something or you want more friction or whatever, then you could you could stack this up, and you could add a whole nother like setup like this. If you want to quick quickly add some more friction, you could like slap another beaner in here like this. That'll add some more friction like that. If you wanted to, but that's pretty cool. So if you drop your, you know, repel device, you can always make one like this. Also, you know, you're not going to get a twisting effect with this thing. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. Okay, here's another neat one. It's a, I don't think there's an American name for it. Uh, I, this was dropped down in my Discord. So if you haven't joined the Discord yet, I don't know what you're doing. I pay for it so you can join up in there. I pay for the Nitro. And I'm going to start dropping some, uh, some contest things. We have a brand new crag dog channel where people are dropping their crag dogs. It's a load of fun. Definitely check it out. You know, it's free. What the hell? Join up. See you there. I'll chat, I'll chat with you in there. So anyway, uh, this one, you just take a bite, the bite of rope like this. You pass it through here. And then you're just going to take your other locker. So you got that bite of rope. See, you got both strands. You're going to take this other locker. And you're going to clip that like so. And then you're going to clip under here, under this locker here, like that. Now, it should look like this. And then you clip into here. And that goes down quite nicely. Pretty cool. Um, if you unclip from this, or if you rest on a ledge or something, and you go to stand up, and it, then this, you know, this is a big locker, you see that? And then this passes through there, well, <laughs> now you don't got anything. 
So, I mean, you'd have to obviously kind of unclip from that anyway for that to happen. So, you, you don't want that to, that to happen. Hey, look. Hey, look at that. That's a pretty cool way to make that. Look, you clip there. And then you pass that one through here. And then you all of a sudden you got it. Ah, interesting. I'm still playing around with this one. So, uh, yeah, this one is brand new in the Discord. Checking that out and playing with that. That's pretty interesting. Another tried and true method, if you only have two lockers, is just grab the two strands. You feed that bite through like so. And you bring up the bottom two strands that are coming from behind that locker. You grab your other locker and you just clip all four strands. Whoop. Just like so. And then you clip into this one. Well, preferably on this side so the rope isn't sliding on the lock. And then you pedal down like that. Okay, so let's say for some reason you dropped your harness and your belay device and you're going to have to go down with just the rope. Well, hopefully this isn't over an overhang like I'm about to do right now. And it's just a really steep uh, incline, like a slab that you have to go down or like some, maybe you're on a dome or something. And uh, it's just steep enough where you don't want to fall down and tumble down to the ground. So you're going to need to do something. So what you're going to do is you're going to pass it between your legs like so you're gonna go across your chest over here opposite side over your shoulder break strand over here back to your right that way you're can't if you're holding here you have the potential of it popping off your shoulder so over here break strand back on this side and let me tell you, this ain't going to be fun. It ain't going to be comfy. You're going to be crying all the way down. Well, I hope you thoroughly enjoyed that episode. People at the gym tell me I have a cult following now. We even have a hand sign. So if you want to join our cult, if you want to join YouTube's favorite underground climbing channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and check out all the other links I got down below. Josh Perry, climbing out of here.